Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial is for the Big Boy Pot Holder. This pot holder was made using Willow Yarns Cumulus Cotton. Let me tell you a little bit about the yarn and then I want to talk to you a little bit about the pot holder. I just want to show you how thick and chunky this cotton yarn is. Isn't that wonderful? I seen this yarn on Willow's Yarns website and I just had to have it. Now I purchased it in mind of making a tote bag, but I decided to make a quick and easy project of a big boy pot holder because I am in need of some nice pot holders. This is 100% cotton. It's machine washable. It comes in a 3.5 ounce, 100 gram, 71 yards per ball. It recommends a size 10 or 6 millimeter needles or a size J10 or 6 millimeter crochet hook. Now, when I first started the pot holder, I was using the recommended hook size and then I ripped it out and I went one size larger. I am going to be using a size 10 and a half K 6.5 millimeter instead of the recommended hook size. Now I wouldn't go any larger or you won't have enough to make your pot holder. So this yarn is wonderful to work with. I absolutely love how thick and chunky it is, especially for a pot holder. Now I do think it's way too thick for a dishcloth and let me just show you why. For our pot holder, we're going to be making a front and back piece, but look how thick this is. That, I think, is way too thick for a dishcloth. You might have trouble with this as a dishcloth, but it's really thick and it's wonderful as a pot holder. Now, my pot holder here, I use two pieces. Again, we're going to make the front piece and we're going to make the back. They're both exactly the same, and then we're just going to take the front piece and the second piece and lay them on top of each other and then we're going to crochet the border around our pot holder make our little hanging loop and your pot holder is finished these are really wonderful because look how thick they are when you put those two pieces of cotton squares together you're not going to burn your hands when you go to reach in the oven and pull a cookie sheet out. It's going to be thick and it's going to protect your hand. It's also going to protect your table if you put a hot pan from the stove onto your table. Make sure you stick it on this because this is extra, extra thick. So for our project today, you're going to need two balls of yarn to make just one pot holder. If you buy three balls of yarn, you can make two pot holders. When I made my two pieces, it took the whole entire ball. This is all I had left over. Not enough to do my border. So, so close, but yet so far. So I had to use a second ball of yarn to put my trim on. You're going to need two balls of yarn for one pot holder. So you can either choose two of the same color and make everything the same color, or you can choose one color for the center and one ball for your trim. If you want to make a set of pot holders exactly the same, then you would pick two balls of the same color to make your four pieces, and then you would need one ball of a contrasting color for your trim. If you want to make both pot holders all the same color, then you would need three balls of the same color. You're also going to need a size 10 and a half K or a 6.5 crochet hook. So grab your yarn, grab your hook, and let's get our project started. To begin our project, we're going to chain 18. I already attached my yarn to the hook and I always use a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer. So to begin, you're going to yarn over the hook and pull through the loop on your hook. Now the first one is tight because I use that double knot. So that is one. Yarn over, pull through the loop. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
and 18. So you should have a total of 18 chains. So to begin row one, we're going to skip the first chain. Remember the loop on your hook does not count as a chain. So we're skipping the first chain and we're going to go into the second chain. We're going to work a single crochet into the second chain. Insert into that chain. You're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two loops. You just made a single crochet. Now we're going to work a double crochet into the same chain. Yarn over, insert into that chain, yarn over, and pull through. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over, and pull through two loops. You just made a double crochet. Now we're ready to begin our repeat. We're going to skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work one single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, and work a double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, work a double crochet. Let's do it again. Skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, work a double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's go ahead and continue working across our chain. Skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, work a double crochet. We're going to continue across until we get to the last two chains. Skip the next chain, single crochet into the next chain. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, work your double crochet. We have a couple repeats to go. You're going to skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same chain, work a double crochet. We're almost to the end. Skip the next chain, insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert into that same chain, work a double crochet. Now we're down to our last two chains. So to end the row, you're going to skip the next chain, insert into the last chain, and my chain's a little tight because I use that double knot, and work one single crochet. And row one is finished, and this is what your work looks like. So now we're going to do row two. Row two is our repeat row, very simple row. So let's begin row two. For row two, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip the beginning chain one. We're going to go into the very first stitch. So if you turn your work, you're going to see the top of your stitches. So skip the chain one, insert into the first stitch under the top two loops work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same first stitch and work a double crochet. You're doing both stitches into that same beginning single crochet stitch. So now to work across the row, you're going to skip the double crochet stitch, that long stitch. So you're skipping the next stitch and going into the next stitch, which is the short single crochet stitch. Insert under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Yarn over and double crochet back into that same single crochet stitch. Let's do it again. You're going to skip the next stitch, which is the double crochet, and you're going to insert into the next stitch, which is a single crochet. Insert under the top two loops, work a single crochet. 
yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. You're going to skip the next stitch, which is a double crochet, insert into the next stitch, which is a single crochet, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. So let's continue. Skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet, yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. Skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. Skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. Skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. So now we're over to our last two stitches. So we're going to skip this next double crochet, insert into the top of the last stitch, which is the last single crochet stitch across, insert under the top two loops, and work just one single crochet. And that is the end of row two. So row two is a very simple row, and you're just going to repeat that back and forth. So again, to continue, you're going to chain one, you're going to turn your work, and then you're going to repeat row two 12 more times. You're going to have a total of 14 rows. So when you crochet your piece, you can count your rows. You'll see one row is going to the right, this row is going to the left, the right, left, so you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, count up and make sure you have a total of 14 rows. So we completed two rows already. So if you need additional help, just click back on the video and follow the video for row two 12 more times until you have a total of 14 rows. I'll meet you when you get to the end of row 14. I'm over at the end of row 14. Make sure you do a row count and you have 14 rows. And now I'm just going to fasten off. Now I chain two, one, two, pull my hook up, yarn out, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. Now this thick yarn, you may have to tug on that to get it down, but try not to tug too hard or you'll break your yarn. So now to continue, you need to make one more block exactly the same way that you made this block. So you can either click back on the video and start at the beginning and chain 18 and work 14 rows. Or if you remember how, go ahead and make your second block. So again, you're going to need two blocks. You're going to need one for the front and one for the back. So go ahead and make your second block and I'll be back and I'll show you how to put the border and your hanging loop on your pot holder. So now since we have our two pieces finished, we're going to put our pieces together and then crochet around the border. So this square here on this side is all ready to go. It's the wrong sides facing up and the right side is on the bottom right here. So we want the right sides on the outside of our pot holder. So this square I'm gonna leave as is, and again, this is where we fastened off. And then the block on this side, this is where I fastened off, but this is the wrong side. So we need to flip this over on top of the other one. So we have the right side facing on the outside of our pot holder, and when you flip it over, the right side is on the bottom. The wrong sides are together on the inside. So when you hear someone say, put the wrong sides together, they want the wrong sides touching each other on the inside. Your right sides will be facing out. 
Now I already joined my pink and I joined it with a double knot because this is a really thick yarn and sometimes it's a little more difficult to weave those ends in and tie a knot. So I tied it now and then I'm going to join my yarn up in the upper top corner. So I'm going over to the top right hand corner and you can weave these ends in. I'm just going to tuck it inside the pot holder because I'm trying to get the video done. So you can weave it in or just do what I do and push it right on the inside of your pot holder. You're going to insert under the top two loops of the first stitch. And then you're going to insert under the top two loops of the first stitch, matching stitches across. I'm going to yarn over, pull through both thicknesses, and pull through the loop on my hook. And this helps make a secure join. Then I'm going to stuff that inside too. We're going to begin and we're going to chain one. We're going to work one half double crochet in each stitch across. Yarn over, insert back into that very first stitch, and again you're going through both thicknesses and we're matching stitches across. Yarn over and pull back through. You have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. We just made a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert under the top two loops of the top block, and then match it to the matching stitch below. Go under the top two loops, yarn over, pull through both thicknesses, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Again, you're going to yarn over, insert under the top two loops of the next stitch, match it to the matching stitch below, and work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert under the top two loops of the next stitch, and then match it to the stitch below, insert under the top two loops, work a half double crochet. So I'm just going to go ahead and work across. Again, just make sure you're matching those stitches to the one below, half double crochet into the next stitch, and go through to the back and match it to the stitch below work a half double crochet. So now I'm just going to work my half double crochets across to the corner. So when I work this stitch, everyone has their own method. I find it easier. I seem to be putting my finger in between the pieces, my thumb on top, my finger behind, and it just helps me to match those stitches. So I yarn over and then I put my fingers and push it under the top two loops of the next stitch and then use my fingers to find the stitch below. And then I work my stitch. Half double crochet into the next stitch, matching it to the stitch below. And we're just going to repeat that across to the corner. And I think it's easier when you do one stitch at a time. You go in the top stitch and then match it to the stitch below. But again, everybody has their way of doing things. So whatever is easiest for you. So we have about five stitches to go. So again, yarn over, insert under the top two loops of the next stitch, match it to the stitch below, work your half double crochet. Again, into the next stitch. Half double crochet into the next stitch. And then we have one stitch remaining, half double crochet into the last stitch across. And when you look at your work, you should have a total of 17 half double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So for the corner, you're going to chain two. One and two. 
Now working down the length, it's a little bit harder to see where your row end stitches are. So what we're going to do is we're going to work 14 half double crochet evenly spaced across to your next corner. So you're going to have 17 half double crochet across the top and the bottom and 14 down the sides. So yarn over, insert into the first row end stitch, try to match it to the first row end stitch below, work your half double crochet. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch and you want to make sure you're going through both blocks. That's why I use my fingers. I went through the top block and now I'm going into the block below. Work your half double crochet. That is two of 14. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch and just do the best you can to try to match that up. That's three of 14. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch. That's four. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch. That's five. I'm going to continue working one half double crochet in each row end stitch down to the corner, counting my stitches. So we did one, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 and then into the last row end stitch work your half double crochet and that's 14 so just do a double stitch count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 14 now we're going to chain 2 for our corner now we're going to be working across the bottom of our foundation chain. So when you look at your work, you're going to see here's your first chain and you can see where the chains are right here. So we're going to be working in each one of these chains at the bottom of the foundation row. We're going to work one half double crochet in each chain across and we're going to have a total of 17 half double crochet stitches. So I'm just going to tuck this yarn inside. You're going to yarn over, insert into that very first chain, then match it to the first chain on the bottom block. Work your half double crochet. And again, it helps if these are already weaved in. Half double crochet into the next chain match it to the chain below, work your half double crochet. That's two. You're going to half double crochet into the next chain, match it to the chain below, work your half double crochet. That's three of 17. Half double crochet into the next chain, match it to the chain below, work your half double crochet. That is four of 17. So now I'm just going to go ahead and continue and work one half double crochet into the next chain and I'm matching it to the chain below. And we're going to do that in each chain across for a total of 17 stitches. So right now we worked one, two, three, four, five stitches. Half double crochet into the next chain 
match it to the chain below. That's six. Half double crochet into the next chain. That's seven. I'm going to continue working across, just counting my stitches as I go. That's eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. And then into the last chain, work a half double crochet and that's 17 stitches. So when you look at your work, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen half double crochet across the bottom of your pot holder. So now we're going to chain two for the corner. One, two, and now we're going to work down the side of our pot holder and we have 14 rows. So we're going to work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down to the next corner and we're going through both thicknesses. And you can see this is how your pot holder gets joined together by crocheting through both thicknesses. And we're doing exactly what we did on the opposite side going down the length. So let's begin. Yarn over, insert into the first row and stitch, match it to the first row and stitch on the block below, work your half double crochet. That's one of 14. Half double crochet into the next row and stitch, and again you're matching it to the row below, work your half double crochet. That's two of 14 half double crochet into the next row and stitch. Again, match it to the row and stitch below. Work your half double crochet. That is three of 14. I'm just going to go ahead and continue and work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down until I have a total of 14 stitches across. So I'm at three. four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 and into the last row and stitch work a half double crochet 
and that's 14. So when you look at your work, you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 stitches. We're going to chain 2 for our corner. We're going to join with a slip stitch up here in the top of our beginning half double crochet. This is our chain one where we join, so you want to skip that and go under the top two loops, work a slip stitch. So now we're going to make our hanging loop. So we're going to chain nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. What we're going to do now is you're going to flip your pot holder over and then we're just going to slip stitch into the corner chain two space. So you're just going to insert your hook right underneath the corner chain two space and yarn over, pull through that space and pull through the loop on your hook. Your hanging loop is made. So now I'm going to fasten off now you might want to use a longer length if you're weaving this in because this is thick cotton and you want to make sure you have enough room to maneuver that. Now with this cotton I'm chaining two but you're going to have a pretty nice size knot. So pull that down and just work with your fingers and try to get that knot down inside below your loop. Just make sure that's really tight to secure that and your loop is nice and secure. Now I don't have my yarn needle but what I do is I weave this in throughout some of these stitches. I'll go up here and then I'll come down through this loop, back up this small loop, back down, up, and back down and then whatever yarn I have left over I'll pull it underneath and in between my pot holder by just taking my yarn needle down through and then I trim it off. I bring the needle up and cut the end off and then the ends inside the pot holder and then I do the same thing with this end. Our pot holder is finished. This is the front and when you turn it over this is the back. I hope you enjoyed today's crochet tutorial. Get creative with color and have fun creating crochet projects for your kitchen and home. So thank you everybody for stopping by today, spending a little time with me, and having fun crocheting. So until next time, happy crocheting everyone.